A Russian opposition leader has said that Vladimir Putin's nuclear threat is real and not just words. He pointed out that Russia could, could use its nuclear capabilities against Ukraine if the country tries to recapture Crimea. Putin has time and again claimed that Russia is ready to use nuclear weapons. Last month, Putin announced his decision to pull out of the new Strategic Arms Reduction Treaty. It was the last remaining nuclear arms control agreement it shared with the US. French President Emmanuel Macron met Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban in Paris. The aim of the meeting was to discuss the war in Ukraine, energy crisis and Europe's defence industry. Orban has criticised the European Union's sanctions on Russia. He recently said that the EU was waging an indirect war on Russia through its military support to Ukraine. Orban has ruled out sending arms to Ukraine. Iran has said that 22,000 people who participated in anti-government protests have been pardoned. The protests began in September last year. They were triggered by the death of a 22-year-old woman, Masa Amini, while she was in the custody of the country's morality police. More than 500 protesters have died, while almost 20,000 have been detained. Four protesters have been executed since December. Australia's Defence Minister has said that the country offered China a briefing over its nuclear-powered submarine deal with the US and UK. Australia has made more than 60 calls over the last week. This is to inform leaders in the Pacific and Southeast Asia about the agreement. US President Joe Biden, UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak and Australian Prime Minister Anthony Albanese met in the US state of California. The three countries are part of AUKUS, which aims to counter China. China has blasted the US, UK and Australia over the new nuclear submarine deal. The Chinese Foreign Ministry said that the three nations have gone further down a wrong and dangerous road for their selfish political gains. China also added that the US should show sincerity, meet halfway and bring the bilateral relationship back on track with practical action. Japan has said that North Korea may step up its provocative actions. This includes missile launches and nuclear tests. The statement comes after North Korea launched two short-range ballistic missiles off its east coast. Japan has said that it will continue to cooperate with the US and South Korea. It will connect and analyze necessary information. North Korea's missile launch came ahead of the largest South Korea-US joint military drill in five years. Armenia's Prime Minister has said there is a very high probability of an escalation on the Azerbaijan border and in the Nagorno-Karabakh region. He has accused Baku of stepping up aggressive rhetoric. This comes a week after Azerbaijani troops and Armenians exchanged gunfire. Five people were killed in the incident. A fragile truce has been in place between the two countries since a war broke out in 2020. People protested outside Westminster Abbey in London. The protest comes ahead of a service. The service aims to mark the new king's first Commonwealth Day. Protesters were dressed in yellow and carried placards which read, Not My King. They also called for the decriminalization of homosexuality in Commonwealth countries. King Charles succeeded his mother, Queen Elizabeth, who died last September. Colombia's Navy has seized drugs from a semi-submersible sea vessel. 2.6 tons of cocaine were seized during the operation. During the inspection, officials also found two bodies and two people in poor health conditions. They had inhaled toxic fumes from fuel. Officials said that drugs were being taken to Central America. A migrant boat travelling from Libya capsized due to bad weather. This is according to Italy's Coast Guard. 30 people have gone missing, while 17 have been rescued in the central Mediterranean. 
Italy's Coast Guard said that the capsizing occurred outside the Italian search and rescue area. However, a non-profit organization has blamed Italy for not sending its Coast Guard on time despite repeated calls. Mexico's president has said that his country is safer than the US. The comments come days after four Americans were abducted after crossing into Mexico. Two of them were killed and the other two were sent back to the US. Five suspected drug cartel members have been arrested for kidnapping and homicide. Mexican authorities say that drug traffickers mistook the Americans for rivals and shot them when they tried to escape. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken will travel to Ethiopia and Niger. The trip aims to engage with Africa to counter China's growing influence on the continent. Blinken will visit Addis Ababa and Niamey. He will discuss the peace deal that ended hostilities in Ethiopia's northern Tigray region. This is the third high-profile visit this year by a top official of the Biden administration. Former U.S. President Donald Trump has shifted the blame for the Capitol riots on former U.S. Vice President Mike Pence. Trump said, and I quote, he had sent the vote, had he sent the votes back to the legislatures, they wouldn't have had a problem with January 6th. So in many ways, you can blame him. The statement comes after Pence said that history will hold Trump accountable for the Capitol riots. The riots happened after Trump supporters stormed the U.S. Capitol building. Several parts of the Pakistani city of Karachi witnessed a huge power outage. This reportedly happened as a high-tension transmission cable tripped due to a technical fault. About 40% of Karachi was left without power. This is not the first time Karachi has witnessed a huge power outage. In January this year, a severe power breakdown had hit Pakistan. It happened due to frequency fluctuations in the national grid. At least eight people have been killed in a landslide in the Brazilian city of Manaus. The landslide was caused by heavy rains. A state of emergency has been declared in the city. Locals and rescuers have been working to look for survivors under the debris. People say that a lack of precaution and housing options have led to such a situation. Brazilian President Lula da Silva attended the 52nd Assembly of Indigenous Peoples of Roraima. He called for new land, new lands reserved for indigenous people to be demarcated soon. He said this is to let them occupy the territory that is already theirs. Lula also pointed out that the move will help with climate protection. His government has pledged to prohibit illegal encroachment on indigenous preserves. Peru continues to deal with the destruction caused by Cyclone Yaku. Homes were swept away as water levels rose. The cyclone unleashed heavy rains in the region. More than 50 families have been affected. A state of emergency was declared in 400 districts. Nearly 60 people have lost their lives since the start of the rainy season. The British Antarctic Survey has released the aerial footage of the A81 iceberg. It's as big as Greater London. Scientists are concerned as the iceberg could pose a threat to shipping, fishing and wildlife. Researchers are observing A81 and A76A, which is, even, which is an even bigger iceberg. It's as big as Cornwall. The two icebergs broke away from Antarctica. They will take decades to melt. A huge wildfire broke out in the northeastern region of Argentina. It affected around 3,000 hectares of land. Firefighters, police and two water bombing planes have been deployed to douse the flames. This is the largest wildfire reported in 2023 so far. This comes as parts of Argentina are facing record temperatures for the month of March.
The American startup accelerator Y Combinator has sent a petition to the US government over Silicon Valley Bank's collapse. The petition underlines that 10,000 small businesses with accounts in Silicon Valley will not be able to pay their employees for the next 30 days. The petition also mentioned that approximately 100,000 jobs are in danger as a result of the bank's collapse. Elon Musk's Tesla and China's electric vehicle and battery maker BYD have denied reports claiming they're ending cooperation on battery supplies. According to the reports, Tesla had not asked BYD for an additional supply of batteries for certain Tesla Model 3 vehicles after the supply deal had expired earlier this year. BYD has said that the reports are not in line with the actual situation. Boeing is expected to sell nearly 80 787 Dreamliner airplanes to two Saudi Arabian airlines. An announcement of the plan is expected soon. The list prices for the 78 planes would total nearly $37 billion. State-owned Saudi Arabian Airlines and new national airline Riyadh Air will be acquiring the aircraft. Saudi's Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman had formally announced Riyadh Air's creation on Sunday. According to European defense sources, Madrid is likely to cancel the remaining 13 Air Airbus aircraft in Spain's quota under Europe's A400M defense project. The A400M is one of Europe's core defense projects. It's also a focal point for aerospace investment in Spain. Spain had ordered 27 troop planes from Airbus and was responsible for their final assembly. Rishi Sunak has indicated that the UK could follow the US and Canada in banning TikTok from government devices. Sunak had said he, would, he will take whatever steps are necessary to protect Britain's security. The Prime Minister has underlined that the UK was looking at what our allies are doing in the wake of the decision by other countries to remove TikTok. According to media reports, E-commerce platforms in China have been selling chat GPT logins along with international phone numbers. The development comes as China is seeing a huge demand for logins for using the popular chatbot. WeChat has also seen a lot of fake chat GPT apps mushroom in the last few months. According to the latest tech reports, Search engine giant Baidu is behind a number of digital employees in China. From, from McDonald's ambassadors to financial advisors, the number of AI employees are on the rise across businesses in China. Following in Baidu's footsteps, other Chinese companies are now also experimenting with a more virtual workforce. This includes in the C-suite. An AI-based fan recreation of Johan Vermeer's masterpiece, Girl with a Pearl Earring, has sparked a fierce art debate. One AI recreation out of several fan recreations has been put up at a museum at The Hague in the Netherlands. It's replacing the 1665 original as the original is being exhibited in Amsterdam. This has raked up a massive art debate with critics claiming that the AI representation is not art, but technology. Social media giant Meta has announced that it's working on a new text sharing platform, likely to rival Twitter. Meta founder Mark Zuckerberg has said that the platform is exploring a standalone, decentralized social network for sharing text updates. Meta's new platform will also allow interoperation with other platforms, including Mastodon. Two Spanish engineers are hoping to put their country at the forefront of the space transport industry. They are prepping for the launch of what could be the first private reusable rocket from Western Europe. The, the much-anticipated launch is set to take place later this year. The micro-launcher is as tall as a three-story building. It has a 100 kg cargo capacity and can be used to carry out zero gravity experiments.
India's men in blue are set to face Australia in the World Cricket Test Championship final. This after New Zealand ended Sri Lanka's slim hopes of re reaching the decider. To book their spot in the finals, Sri Lanka needed to win their series in New Zealand 2-0. The team was also relying on India not winning their final fourth test against Australia in Ahmedabad. David Saker is to work as England's fast bowling coach throughout the Ashes Test Series. Saker previously coached England during their successful Ashes campaigns of 2010, 2011 and 2013. The Australian currently coaches the white ball squad in Bangladesh. He has agreed to a short-term deal after being approached by Ben Stokes during last year's T20 World Cup. Manchester City manager Pep Guardiola has demanded more control on the pitch from the team. This is ahead of City's Champions League second leg tie against German side RB Leipzig. City drew one all with the side during the first leg. According to Pep, if Manchester City don't win against RB Leipzig tonight, their Champions League fate will be a coin toss. Pep added that he knows that his time in City will be judged by his Champions League record. Rehan Skinner has been sacked as Tottenham's manager after nine successive Women's Super League defeats. The club currently finds itself in danger of relegation. Spurs beat Brighton 8-0 in, uh, in late October, but have since lost every league game and, are, and exited the Continental Cup and FA Cup. Skinner was appointed in November 2020, leaving her role as the England women's team assistant coach. More than a million people have signed a letter supporting migrant World Cup workers. The letter demands that FIFA finally compensate migrants who suffered appalling human rights abuses while working on the World Cup in Qatar. The letter has been handed to football's governing body by the human rights groups Amnesty and Abaz. The human rights group, uh, groups want FIFA to use its $7 billion legacy fund to help these migrant workers. Mexico have clinched an 11-5 win over the U.S. in the World Baseball Classic at Chase Field. Joey Meneses hit two homers, including a crucial three-run shot in the fourth inning. The Americans scored three runs in the eighth to make the final outcome more respectable. USA and Mexico currently sit third and fourth behind Canada and Colombia in the qualifying group. Great Britain topped Colombia 7-5 to claim its first World Cup Baseball Classic victory. GB are making their tournament debut at the fifth edition of the WBC. However, they lost to defending champions USA and Canada over the weekend in Phoenix, Arizona. Britain faced Mexico in their, fi Britain faced Mexico in their final pool game later this evening. British tennis player Emma Raducanu has scored her best win in the 18 months since her US Open triumph. She has defeated world number 13 Beatrice Haddad Maya in a thrilling match under the palm trees of Indian Wells. After two hours and 20 minutes of fascinating drama, Raducanu won 6-1-2-6-6-4 scoreline. This is only the second time since the US Open title that she has won three matches at the same event. Ferrari's turbulent 2023 season could get worse. It's on the brink of losing a second key team member as the crisis at the Italian giant deepens. Head of aerodynamics David Sanchez is widely expected to move over to McLaren. Another departure could also be imminent. Speculations are mounting over race director Lauren Mekki's exit as well. Olympic high jump champion Dick Fosbury has died at the age of 76. He revolutionized the high jump event with a radically different jumping technique that was eventually named after him. Fosbury won gold in the high cup at the 1968 Olympic Games in Mexico City. He jumped back first to clear the bar. This technique has since been named the Fosbury flop and is used by all high jumpers today. The Hong Kong International Film Festival is set to return to an in-person format. This move comes after a hiatus of four years. The festival will be held between March 30th and April 10th. 
200 films from 64 countries will be showcased at the festival. Hong Kong has chosen locally produced films to open and close the festival. The Edinburgh Film Festival is eyeing a summer schedule for its 2023 edition. The week-long program will run from August 18th to 23rd. The 76th edition of the festival will have a scaled-down format. It will show the works of local as well as international filmmakers. Music musician Drake has announced dates for his It's All a Blur tour. With this, Drake will return to touring after a gap of five years. He will begin the tour on June 16th from Louisiana. He'll perform in Chicago, Boston, New York and Miami, among other places. Pre-sales tickets will be available from March 15th onwards. Rapper Sean Diddy Combs has his eyes set on a majority stake in Bet Media Group. Reports came in after owner Paramount Global explored a sale of the asset. A, close, a source close to Combs has confirmed the report. He said that Combs wants to build a black-owned global media powerhouse. Beauty brand Sephora has teamed up with TikTok. This is to create a new program for founder-led beauty brands. Emerging creators will also be included in the incubator program. It will use educational training modules to help provide social content strategies. The program will take place over three sessions. K-pop band New Jeans' Danielle joins YSL Beauty. She's the latest brand ambassador for the beauty brand. The collaboration was announced with a short video. Danielle is already the global brand ambassador for luxury brand Burberry. Friends actor David Schwimmer signed up for a charity bake-off. The Great Celebrity Bake-Off raises money for cancer awareness under its segment Stand Up to Cancer. The 56-year-old lost his grandmother to cancer. He said that his sister is also a cancer survivor, making it all the more important for him to participate. The season finale of The Last of Us broke its own viewership record. Episode 9 clocked in an audience of 8.2 million people. This feat came despite a clash with the Oscars live telecast. This makes it the most watched show in HBO Max's history in Europe and Latin America. The show has been renewed for a second season. Filmmaker David Furnish spoke in support of LGBTQ rights. This was at husband and singer Elton John's Academy Awards viewing party. His views have come amid a wave of anti-drag legislation in the US. The 60-year-old said, it's just politicians trying to score points. Actor Keanu Reeves received a marriage proposal at the premiere of John Wick Chapter 4. A fan in the thousand-plus crowd shouted, I'll marry you, to which Reeves said, be careful what you wish for.